First story. Karen called me a pedophile. I have coached boys 10 to 12 soccer and baseball in a small Midwest town for 5 years now. I move up because my son ages so I typically have the same kids on the team for multiple years. We placed first in our baseball league this year and were invited to the tournament at the next town over. And we play third. Today is the 4th of July and I went to the public pool to swim with my family. We had plans to go to the award ceremony and county fireworks show later in the same park. Like usual, we ran into many kids from the team at the pool. It's small and the only one in the county. They closed the pool abruptly due to staffing issues. I gathered the kids I knew and started calling parents to relay the news. We waited 15 for those parents who could make it. Five boys including my son were left and I told their parents they could meet us at the award ceremony and I would keep them until then. I sent them in a small changing room to get their swim gear off and their ball gear on. All came out and I told them to wait for me at the tables. I went into the changing room to get myself fixed up. Now this locker room is a 12 feet by 12 feet open room with a half wall for a toilet in the corner. One shower sticks in the middle and pinches around the wall. I stripped and rinsed. As I did this, I heard the boys getting rowdy. I turned the water off and started drying myself to get dressed. I looked up and all the boys came in with a lifeguard, saying they were past closed and needed to leave. I covered myself of course and told them I would hurry. I pulled my undergarments on, over the towel, and I got dressed. Now I have always told my kids and those who I coach that there is nothing wrong with changing in a locker room. Seeing other people is fine and it's just part of sports and, well, life. I do try not to change in a room with the boys who are not related to me, but this time that didn't happen. We left the pool and met my family for the 4th of July fun. Some more parents and kids came and we all had fun until the award ceremony. The top team stood up on the main stage in the town fair to receive our awards. As they called our team and gave us a trophy, one of the moms called out, That coach is a pedophile. He exposed himself and violated my son. She screamed that while pointing to me. Everyone looked at her, then me, then started yelling. Everything from condemning me to defending me. The announcer rushed me off the stage and the kids followed. The sheriff and the mom meet me at the bottom of the stairs and the sheriff got her calmed down and asked what she was talking about. She claimed I forced the boys to do proverbial things in the locker room. That was two hours ago. I'm waiting to meet with DFS and Parks and Rick to talk to everyone. Update. Last night was interesting to say the least. All the boys are safe in family services, DFS, doesn't believe anything happened in the locker room. They are still investigating with my full cooperation. I trust my son and one of the other boys wholeheartedly. They understand what the allegations mean for me. They told us nothing happened in that locker room. Seriously, people, have the puberty talk with your kids. The boy who started this had zero exposure to puberty before this. His dad was never in the picture and he is mainly raised by his grandparents. They never talk to him about how your body changes. Also, I hired a lawyer and the police and DFS are still conducting an investigation the whole event. In my past interactions with children, they still have a few kids to talk to that were not present at yesterday's event. My lawyer and family agree it's for the safety for the children and it's normal for them to do so. We are currently in the middle of becoming foster parents. My son is adopted and the same lawyer and social worker is helping us with all of that and this slander. After the initial altercation, the mom's story kept evolving, including the worst things that never made sense. A grandpa who I normally communicate with apologized for his daughter saying she has problems stemming from years of drug use. She seemed to be under the influence during the altercation 
who was supposed to have been watching her son all day while the grandparents stayed home due to COVID risks. DFS is very curious as to why an 11 years old was left at the pool without supervision. Anyways, that's it for now. I will keep you guys posted. Wish me luck. Next story. Entitled Kid Tries to Steal My Antique Truck and Goes to Jail. I have recently come into the position of a 1947 international pickup truck. A monster of a 4WD that looks fantastic now that I've cleaned it up and changed the fluids. Even has the original black diamond in line 6 cylinder engine. Not bad for a barn find. Gorgeous old truck and very desirable as I have come to find it. Now that it's all legal, I have begun driving it regularly and often find myself getting waved, honked at and even asked to pull over a couple of times so someone could have a look at it. I'm constantly getting offers for it as well. It is not for sale, never will be. It's my most treasured position already and I plan on showing it off at different truck rallies and get together. This incident took place at a local gas station slash convenience store. It has started off pretty much a normal day. I've gotten used to the honks and steering already. Nothing unusual when you own an unusual vehicle to me. I pulled into a local 7-Eleven to get gas and a snack. Hadn't had breakfast yet that day and went in, got myself a breakfast burrito and paid for gas. But when I stepped out and made my way back to my truck, I found some teenager sitting behind the wheel of my truck, looking as if he was trying to drive it. I yelled before I got to my truck for the kid to get out, it is not his truck. When I got to it, he still hadn't moved and said, This truck is so cool. Wanna sell it? It is not for sale, kid. Now get out before I yank you out of it. But everything is for sale, and I want it. You're not getting it. It is not for sale. And I opened the door at which the kid suddenly bolted and ran off. Ah, kids these days. I muttered to myself thinking the matter was over. And boy, was I wrong. I had just filled the tank, went back and got my change. Taking time to lock the doors this time before going back in and coming back out. When I got back to my truck, there stood the kid with an adult next to him. He said, My son wants this truck. Hand it over now. What? Not going to happen. If you don't back off of my truck, I'm calling the sheriff and making you back off. You're giving us that truck or we're taking it. I simply pulled out cell phone and started dialing the non-emergency number, at which the man went white and said, Hey now, I was just kidding. You wanna sell it? I told him already, pointed the kid. It is not for sale and won't be. Now I suggest you be gone before the sheriff arrives. And they were suddenly gone. But that isn't the end of the matter yet. The sheriff arrived. I described the incident to him and they checked the security cameras outside the store, but there wasn't much they could do without having seen the incident or having witnesses willing to talk to them. So I went on about my day, doing some shopping at the local Wally World, stopping at a local specialty parts shop to order some parts for the truck that specializes in classic and antique vehicles and headed home. I got home and for a few hours, everything was fine. I had however parked my truck in a secured garage on my property, as I usually do to keep the truck out of the weather and considering what happened earlier, good thing too because as I found out these two were not done trying to get my truck. Late that evening, just as I hit the bed, I heard some unusual noises around the garage. I looked out and saw two figures sprawling about the garage, first trying a security window, then trying to pull the garage doors open. So I snuck out my back door with shotgun and hand rounds, loaded with rock salt and poor grins. Very painful but not deadly unless at near point blank range. Then I load my own shotgun and rifle rounds. Briefly, rock salt when forced into the skin produces an intense burning sensation 
and pork rinds glue themselves to human flesh, as if super glued to it and must be forcibly peeled away without the appropriate solvents. Extremely painful either way. Next thing these two heard was a kachung of a shotgun's round being loaded into a shotgun chamber, and they froze. Then, with a quiet but firm voice, on the ground. Now, both of you. Shortly, both were on their faces, hands behind the back of their head, and they lay there until the sheriff arrived. The sheriff arrived and I laid my shotgun aside as I demanded and accepted being cuffed for the time being. They yanked the two off the ground none too gently and pulled them over to the cruiser they arrived in. They questioned me and took the cuffs off after taking position of the shotgun temporarily and questioned them separately. I told my side of it, making special note that I believed they were after my antique truck, and told them of the earlier incidents that day. They had the unmitigated gal to claim that I had stolen their old truck and had it stashed in the garage and they were just trying to get it back. When asked, I produced the title and registration of the truck and even let them into the garage so they could run the plates. All came back as registered to me and me alone. I had the fun of giving these two a brilliant smile and a wave goodbye as they were driven off and taken to jail. Court date bending at this point. I got my shotgun back after proving it was mine and having to reclaim it from the department, but no big deal. They are still in jail at this point, charged with trespass, attempted theft, attempted auto theft and several other charges. I was there for their initial appearance and when the judge asked if there was any objection to them being unrecognized, I of course objected. Yes, I was being vindictive. I stated they wanted my truck so badly they snuck onto my property at night to try to steal it. I fear if they are released, they will try again. The own recognizes denied. Next story. Fine, I won't use a ladder. I've had issues with one of my neighbors from day one. She thinks that everyone must do as she tells them, and several families have moved because of her. She is upset enough of the neighborhood that everyone has cameras so her and her children cannot do anything without someone having video of it. Her husband is a non-entity who, according to one neighbor, she probably has him by the neck. Because of how close together my house and her house are, in order to get on my roof to replace some shingles that came off in a storm, that ladder would be across the property line. And she had a temper tantrum about it and actually called the police. Her husband, who cannot hold a job, did not come out to talk with me, but I stick called her at her work. This happened the morning of June 30th. There is only three parking in my neighborhood and it gave me an idea of how to get up to my roof and ruin the party they threw each 4th of July. From my street you are able to watch the fireworks. There is very limited parking for her because there is a disabled parking spot in front of my house and the one on the other side of her house and the other one. There is very limited parking for her because there is a disabled parking spot in front of my house and the one on the other side of her house. I made a few calls and rented a boom lift and had it delivered and parked where she normally does that afternoon. So when she got home from work, she threw a fit and called the police to have it moved. But being legally parked and me finally coming out because of her screaming about it, I showed the officer the paperwork for the rental and explained to him how she refuses to allow me to put up a ladder. He told her that it is legally there and nothing can be done. They will just have to wait until I'm done with the roof. I patched the roof on Friday, but the rental company was closed until Tuesday already. So Saturday morning. So Saturday morning, one of my kids came over. We have three. And I told him when he asked about the boom lift, he came up with an idea that would really piss them off. With a few calls he had arranged for safety harness and lines for his wife and kids, we both already have our own safety rigging. So on the 1st of July, my wife, who is afraid of heights, 
stayed on the upper deck and the rest of us went up in the boom to watch the fireworks. Normally, everyone is on a deck for the show. But the grandchildren thought it was the greatest thing ever. On Tuesday morning, July 5th, the rental company came out and picked up the lift. I told the woman picking it up the story and she just loved it. She called her boss and had me tell him. And because of the revenge on the neighbor, they decided to only charge me one day rental and no delivery and pickup fees. So I got to ruin my neighbor's party and make great memories for grandchildren and just pay over $600 instead of just over $2,000 for renting the boom left.